Welcome back again to the program Power Tonight with Elvira dito po sa Diocese ng Hong Kong kung saan po itutuloy namin aming magandang discussion. Part 2 na po ito sa aming guest na walang iba kundi si Miss Anna Lee, isa pong ligang council at the same time si Mr. Conrad Chang. Siya po naman ay nagwo-work sa isang environmental group. Ano na naman kaya ang kanilang pwede i-share sa inyo? Siya po ang subaybayan nyo sa pagbabalik ng Power Tonight with Elvira. May maganda daw po kayong balita. May biyayang darating sa atin. Hinirang ang ating bayan. Pinili ang bansang Pilipinas upang dito idaos ang 51st International Eucharistic Congress. Dadayuhin ng mga Katoliko sa buong mundo. Magkita-kita tayo sa Cebu sa January 2016. Sa selebrasyon na ito, magahari ang pagmamahal sa isa't isa. Dahil tayo ay pamilya ng Diyos at siya ang ating Ama. Saksihan natin ang real presence ni Jesus sa Eucharist. Yan ang misa ng mundo. Pinakamalaking pagsasama ng mga bananampalataya. Pagtulong-tulungan natin para may sakatuparan. Mula sa ating munting kakayahan, may handog natin ang pinakamalaking selebrasyon ng banal na Eucharistia. Sa kapangyarihan ng mamamayang Pilipino, kaya natin ito. Isang pamilya sa ilalim ng isang Diyos. Naging isang bangka tayo sa isang pananampalatay. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So, Anna Conrad. Uh, thank you so much again for being so patient with us and for also accepting to do another episode because I find your life very, very interesting and very enlightening. And I hope that our Filipino televiewers can learn, you know, something that everything is possible as long as you put God ahead of you, you know. Yeah. So I heard that you are both very active in the church, right? So you, you don't belong to the same church. Right, so it is the first time you met, you know. No, actually, we're part of a group, um, the Diocesan English Youth Group. Ah, so uh, you belong to that group. And we, mm -hmm. um, how we knew each other was through um, the monthly uh, Eucharistic Adoration, uh, okay. which we are both part of uh, the core team in helping out with the monthly adoration, yes. Mm -hmm. So this is very important, the Eucharistic Adoration, because I don't know if you heard about it by January uh, 24 to 31, 2016, which is a few months from now. Mm -hmm. We're going to have this 51st International Eucharistic Congress to be held in Cebu. And we have one special day dedicated for the youth. I think if you are very interested, you have to register because, <laughs> you know, your encounter, your experience, you know, and you are perfectly fit to lead the way for other youth, you know, to show them that it's very important to pray in the Adoration Chapel, you know. Because this is the first time that I met a young person who will tell me that she enjoy, you know, being in the Adoration Chapel. You know, 10 years before or 20 years, you know, the Adoration Chapel is very active in the Philippines. Every church is building an Adoration Chapel. Suddenly, it just becomes so quiet. You only see few people going there, you know, only sometimes elderly. Mm -hmm. or maybe those people with problems but we don't see any more people are going there just because they feel they have to be with God you know so it's very refreshing to listen to Anna story that she gave up everything because she feel you know everything is from God so that she doesn't you know have to keep it but rather give it back mm -hmm. to God right so you have this monthly Eucharistic adoration yes. what do you usually do with that do you have many youth praying there so how do you do it well, we started off about a year ago. It's uh, only a year ago, okay. Last April, yes, last mm -hmm. April. And uh, we began with a friend uh, whom we, I, I knew from another group. Um, and, and then we, she asked me if I wanted to come along. She, um, the diocese, diocese has a plan for um, especially the English youth mm -hmm. and wants to gather more youth together, especially in prayer in front of the Eucharist. And I'm sure I'll come along. And 
Let's see, I'll see how I can help out. And that, that yes, eventually now it's been one like, year. like one year now. And then we're, we're growing and, and it's really, it's really, I, I think it's really, it's a really positive sight to see how we start off from last April and all the way till now. Our, the size of our group, the people coming in, it's, it's, encouraging. Really, it's really So you encouraging. started with how many? I think, uh, well... Uh, it's a, it's a yeah. come, so what it is, is um, it's a lights out evening yeah. at the church. We have candles lit on the sides of the stairs, so it's very, it's a very nice and dark, um, cozy atmosphere. Uh -huh, okay. um, and uh, it's from 8 to 10 at night. So uh, the young professionals in this area, they can just it's come in and in and go in and out as you please. So they can feel free to come by whenever after work and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And we have um, so the Eucharist is there, and we are part of the, the the team who kind of support to make this happen. So there's music, um, and then there are also um, silent sessions, silence, um, music silence music mm -hmm. so and there's also confession in the back of the church for people who want to go it's a it's always a very beautiful so there's evening. always priests who are mm -hmm. with you that's yes. from 8 to 10 and most of those you attracted are those people who are very busy with their work who are very stressed yes. you know and they Anyone. find yeah. solace you mm -hmm. find something comfort you know by being there and praying you know so you started with how many and then how many are you now? I think we started initially with around 20 to 30 people and now I think, uh, well, it, it, we have an open door policy so people can yeah, come can and keep track it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think at most we've seen in the chapel was about 100 or two of 150 people at the most. People really will find solace, you know, will find comfort that mm -hmm. There is a moment where they can talk to God in mm -hmm. silence, and they this is your Jesus talking to them. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. Yes, and you find that very, very enlightening. You know, inspired you more, right, Anna? For that sure. you are doing the right thing. Um, I'm. I just, um, you know, from my job, um, or, or not, not only at my job, but um, usually I find that um, in society, many people like to be heard. They like to talk to people or share their yeah. thoughts or views with people. So they're constantly wanting to, you know, to speak or to vent or to complain or to download. And I always say, you know, Jesus is always there to listen to us. So if we would spend the time and vent to Jesus instead of venting to other people, you know, you get the healing, you get the counseling from Jesus directly, and you don't need to bother people around you, and you can spread love to them because Jesus has already given you a lot of support. So. I just find that um, it's really good to to have you know to invite people to adoration because they can they can they can say whatever they want to Jesus and Jesus will listen and help them and and give them answers. So it's that's that's what I tell people. You know, you How do you answer those sarcastic questions? Well, um, luckily, um, I think God probably knows I'm not very good in. Um, defending him verbally in front of others. I have not been asked this question, um, but interestingly, God has brought me a handful of non-Christian friends, who's, mm. because I, I have a lot of non-Christian friends, um, and they, they will come to me and they will say that, you know, I'm, I'm so stressed, I really want to find some peace, just a place where I can sit down and just relax. And, and then some, some people would randomly ask me, you know, Anna, actually, do you meditate? So then when they ask me that, I will say, well, I don't meditate, but what I do is, and then I will explain what I do. And actually, some people have come to adoration with me, even though they were not even Christian. Mm -hmm. And they really enjoyed it, and they said that they felt actually very, um, so they said it's just a, a room, but I felt very peaceful when I sat there. So, and I always tell them that you don't need to do anything, just relax and just be there, and that's all you need to do. Uh, instead of saying, you know, Jesus is there, and you, you know, you should, because it just, if they don't understand, then they, they won't understand. So I'll, I just pray for them. But I always tell them, just relax and be there, 
and you'll be fine and you 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 feel better. So so your method is not to keep on talking I never to do. convince yes. them, but I rather say a word. Yeah. just give them a chance. Just be there and yeah. find out for yourself. And Jesus you think is there, that's so. more effective therapy because those who come back to you will agree with you, you are right. Because what is so beautiful, you don't promise something to them that, oh, when you go there, when you know, you will feel like this. And I think this is one thing that they appreciate. Because she did not tell them what mm. to expect. She just say, you're looking for something, this is a place, a refuge for exactly. you. It's up to you yeah. to feel, to, you know, uh, to, to feel and to understand what I'm talking about. Yeah, and, I think that's, yeah, <laughs> and I think that's the most effective way of uh, evangelizing. Because maybe I'm yeah. not very good in convincing others. <laughs> so God gave me an no, easier task just to invite them. Of your conviction, maybe it's when you talk, they could feel there is something very deep in you, you know. Yeah, without your knowing it, because you, you feel it's okay, I'm just doing... Yeah, a lot of people I ask me done. if I meditate, that's true. <laughs> yeah, and that, yeah, I think that's the reason why you were able to connect deeply and understand what he wants you to do. And I think this is one method where people can learn a lot from you, you know. So do you agree with that? Yeah, I, I, um, I also, uh, well, trying, going back a little bit, um, she was talking about uh, praying at the... Adoration Chapel. Actually, um, I should backtrack a little bit. Yes. Um, my faith actually grew a lot more during my university years okay. because I purposely put myself in a enrolled in a Catholic college so okay. I could keep my faith active. Mm -hmm. And then every time there, when I walked to class, uh, I walked, there was a Newman Chapel inside. Uh, my university and then every time because it was always uh, there was only like one mass a day so it was most of the time it was empty so I'd walk in mm -hmm. I'd walk in and pray because very rarely do you actually get to walk up all the way and pray in front of the tabernacle and that uh, I think it was gave me a, se a sense of comfort mm -hmm. that um, I could not find anywhere. 